All right, so today we're going to uh, do a quick unboxing and review of this um, EM95X. It's one of these kind of generic Android TV boxes. Um, now, I'm pretty sure it doesn't run a legitimate version of Android TV. It's basically just a skin version of Android 6.0, um, but we'll find out more once we actually open it up and throw it up on a screen to see what it looks like. Um, basically, this version in particular um, sports 2 gigabytes of RAM and has an internal memory of 16 gigabytes. Um, obviously, it is expandable via uh, SD card or USB. Uh, the specs on the webpage say it's only expandable up to 32 gigabytes using the external medium, but I have here both a 128 gigabyte uh, USB stick and also a, a SD card. So I'm going to try both these out and see if we can expand the internal storage um, with those. And in addition to the specs you see here on the front, the one I'm mostly concerned about that I want to try out is this H.265 uh, uh, support. Basically, I have here at my home, I have an NVIDIA Shield TV, which chews through anything you throw at it, no issues. I also have a Nexus player, and I've noticed with the Nexus player, it has a hard time playing um, high bitrate H.265 uh, codec uh, files. It actually you know, skips and lags quite a bit. So I'm curious to see if this if this actually can can play those back without any issues. So without any um, other delays, let's see what we got here. All right, packaging isn't too bad. Again, advertising 4K. So we have a five volt at two amp power supply with a uh, DC barrel barrel plug. It does ship with an HDMI cable. Here we have the included remote, and uh, one thing I like about this that we saw, it actually is an IR remote, not just like the Bluetooth ones, like some other ones. So the nice thing about that is you can actually, um, supposedly, you can tie in the certain key functions from your other remotes to your TV and kind of make this your universal remote if you choose to do so. Um, or if you have a Harmony like I do, you can program the Harmony to run this uh, Android TV box as well, which is what I'm hoping we'll be able to do. So we have, looks like a user manual here at the bottom, and, wow, it's actually in English. That's kind of surprising. Looks really detailed as well. Yeah, well, that's great. Typically these are always in Chinese, so that's kind of neat. And then here we have the unit itself. Um, so some of the things that I noticed that uh, I wanted to kind of take a look at more, more closely is that this has a physical power button on it, which is kind of nice. Supposedly it glows uh, LED. This ring right here glows when it's powered on. And it has different power states that it'll, it'll show based on the color. Another cool feature this one has, it actually has this front display, which gives you the system, that gives you time. Um, also, in here it has an infrared port. So again, being able to control uh, using the built-in uh, the, the remote that it comes with, or a Harmony remote, which is what my intent is. Um, from the beginning here. As far as the actual body goes, um, again, you can kind of see the uh, model number here, here as well. Um, it is sporting an M-Logic S905X, um, which is a quad-core um, ARMS SOC using the Cortex A5053. Uh, 50, uh, this one's clocked at 2 gigahertz, so should be able to do what we need it to do with this media. Well, again, we'll check and see. Uh, on the side here, we have a full um, SD card slot and then three USB ports. I'm pretty sure there's USB 2.0, but I'll, I'll see if I can't verify that um, in some testing. On the back here, we have, again, our five volt uh, power supply, power um, plug. We have an op Toslink optical output, uh, HDMI out, uh, ethernet, and then also AV out. So if you want to have component coming out of this first H uh, HD, um, not sure how many scenarios that would be useful, but it's there, so I'm not gonna complain. So that being said, let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what it can do. Looks like it definitely is a skinned version of Android. This is not Android TV. But, I mean, for the price that this thing uh, came, if, if it performs well, I could care less if it's actual Android TV. Uh, looks like it comes preloaded with everything you would need to start. You know, Kodi being one of the primary ones. Looks like Netflix. And then obviously we have our Google Play Store, so anything else you want to throw on here. Uh, easy to do so. The two things I'm going to definitely try out, um, I'm going to load up like MX Player and VLC Player to see how it performs with the uh, H.265 encoded video. 
Um, I'm also going to throw on here Future Mark and uh, a few other benchmarks just to kind of test some some of the uh, horsepower behind this chipset, see how it compares with like the Nvidia Shield TV and the uh, Nexus player. Alright, and quick test with the power button. So the power, it actually does physically shut down the device when you hit this power button here. Um, so in addition to, but when you first plug it in, it automatically turns the unit on. So that's just an initial, initial uh, launch. Now I can hit the power button or I can hit the power button here on the remote and it does in fact uh, boot it back up. So starting here, let's see about how long it takes. So roughly 30 seconds to fully boot up. That's not too great, but I'm wondering if there's some way we can disable that that initial uh, launch screen and whatnot. Um, one thing they did mention in the in the instructions reading through here is that every like month or so you should actually hit this clean memory. Um, so just as a means to to kind of system maintenance. So we'll hit that really quick. It takes about five seconds and you're done. So. Just some maintenance, but again, I'm going to go ahead and install a few applications using the Play Store. I'm probably going to have to log in and get all that set up, but then we'll come back with a, a few um, other apps. Alright, so I've gone through now and I've uh, entered all my Google Play credentials to get the uh, Play Store up and running and install a few applications. I will note that it was a lot easier to do so just by plugging in a USB keyboard um, instead of having to use the remote control to basically you know, navigate through the keyboard on screen and enter all that stuff in. So a lot quicker for the initial setup to use a keyboard. So first off, 3D Mark. And once this is actually up and running, I'll go ahead and um, fast forward the video just to get the results. And again, the shot, this extreme shot is the one the the Nexus player could run. It was saying this one's not compatible due to, I guess it can't scale to this high resolution. Um, so, anyways, we'll just go ahead and run this uh, Ice Storm Unlimited. I'm doing Unlimited versus Extreme because the NVIDIA Shield completely maxes out the Extreme, so it's not the best test to run. So we'll run this one. And we'll go ahead and launch it. All right, so that benchmark's done. Um, now, really quick before I go to PC Mark, I found this kind of interesting. So when I go to Device Info, it's basically saying it's a, a mystery machine. Uh, there's really no information yet on this device, so I guess it speaks towards maybe this this chipset's fairly new. Nothing on record yet at at, uh, at Future Mark's um, you know database. So now we're gonna go down to PC Mark, and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll go ahead and launch this and see what kind of score we get. All right, so with that test done, we have both 3D Mark and PC Mark out of the way. So let's go ahead and load up N22 Benchmark for our final one here. And I've already gone ahead and installed the uh, like the 3D components that are required for this this benchmark. So we'll go ahead and run it and give it a few seconds here for it to do its thing. All right, when you load up Geekbench 4 Benchmark, this is another app that doesn't really work, work well with remotes, so I'm going to turn on the uh, air mouse. Alright, so first I'm going to try this 128GB uh, uh, SD card. Essentially this is uh, formatted at this point as XFAT, so we'll see if it reads it. I may have to convert it back to FAT32, which I'd prefer not to do because a lot of my HD movie files you know, surpass that 4GB limit, but let's see what happens. Well, okay, upside down. Oh, it sticks out. 
Ugh, not a fan of that. Alright, so it shows the device storage here. Fire up VLC player. All right, so X for X X fat format does work. 128 28 gigabytes. Not a big fan of how the uh, card sticks so far out of the device. I wish they would either made it so it was flush, or maybe even done a micro SD so it didn't have to stick out almost a full inch out of the device. So that's not great. All right, so we've tested out the the SD card. Um, we know that that does in fact work. Uh, formatted X, X, X fat works fine. Um, now we're trying out this little 128 gigabyte USB stick, and I'll probably end up going with this because I don't like I like how this doesn't stick out as far as this one did. And currently this one is formatted uh, fat 32. Um, I'm gonna test a few things out. If everything works, I'll probably switch this over to X fat as well, just so I can uh, load up larger HD files and whatnot. But one thing I wanted to make a quick mention of, um, I've noticed that quite a few of the applications that are not made for like Android TV specifically uh, don't work all that well using a remote control function. Um, it's just, it's really hit or miss what ones work well with, with the remote control. So what I've found is kind of a cool bridge measure um, between kind of Android TV and your standard Android OS is this remote right here. So this is called the uh, BMAX um, 2.4 gigahertz wireless remote. And this has a few great features for this particular type of uh, Android, you know, generic Android TV box. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it actually has quite a few uh, good button selections here that I'm liking. Uh, one of the things I've noticed off the bat is it has three dedicated Android buttons. So we have our home, back, and menu, which is nice to see. Um, in addition, something that I thought was really neat is it has this built-in voice search. So there's a microphone right up here. And if I go into a search menu and hold down this, it actually engages, the little LED pops on, it actually engages the microphone. And you can actually do voice searches, which is really neat because the standard remote control that it came with has no such functions. Um, this one is programmable. Uh, you can program some additional keys on here if you choose to do so. But another thing I really like is the fact that it has a built-in QWERTY keyboard here in the back. So again, going and you know, putting in your, your just registration info for like a Plex server or for Google Play Store, a lot easier with this versus having to click through an on-screen keyboard. Another great feature it has is this air mouse. This button right here enables the air mouse. And if you see, um, just by me moving around the remote, the pointer uh, follows it. So I found that to be really helpful in applications that don't really work well with like remote clicks for navigation. You just basically point, point and click and we can go where we need to go. So let's go down to VLC here and try this out with the with this USB stick we have in here. And just as before, everything loads up. Now this USB stick seems to be quite a bit faster than the SD card. It is a USB 3.0, so maybe that has something to do with it. All right, and it did that. So we'll load up that same uh, H.265 file. This is a really crappy movie, but it's one that I had on, on here for my kids, so we'll give it a test. Yeah, and again, everything loads just fine. Very good to see there. And again, I can hit back uh, with this remote, or I can just hit home, and it takes me straight to home. So, really liking that functionality, um, and the fact that the USB stick actually uh, works as well. I, I will format this back to an X, X fat and load some bigger files on there. But we've seen that that definitely um, is good to see. Being you only have 16 gigabytes of built-in memory, so you can load up a bunch of media on that or maybe utilize it for um it, it did bring up the menu when i first plugged this in that allows you to basically expand storage so if you wanted your device storage to be increased maybe you have a bunch of games on here a bunch of emulators you could utilize this to basically expand the internal storage on this uh, tv box so that is another option there um, i'm personally just going to use this for external media at, the, uh, for, at this time um, but i probably will actually load up some emulators on this guy as well um, I've been having a lot of fun with with retro retroarch and you know these these wireless bluetooth controllers so we'll probably give that a spin as well not in this review per se but uh, we will at some point play with that all right so let's wrap up this uh review with just talking about some of the benchmark performance uh compared against other devices um i will mention really quick i did a, in fact run a few emulators um older stuff you know more retro games like ar arcade uh, NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, those all ran without any issues, no problem at all. Um, I did have 
some skipping when I was running an, a Nintendo 64 emulator. It was dropping some frames, so it was still playable, but wasn't as great as I've seen it elsewhere, so take it for what it's worth. Um, it's probably still a decent retro gaming system if you want to use it for that, but this is more geared, geared toward media playback. So starting off with 3D Mark, um, I ran Ice Storm Unlimited against the uh, NVIDIA Shield TV, being that the Nexus player for some reason couldn't run that benchmark. The NVIDIA Shield TV scored 44,907. The uh, EM95X scored 7,009. So obviously that one's not the best comparison because the NVIDIA Shield TV is just a beast of a mobile uh, streaming platform. Nothing can even come close to touching it. So not a huge surprise there. Jumping over to PC Mark, um, NVIDIA Shield TV scored an overall score of uh, 5,831. The Nexus player was 3,635, and the EM95X was 2,475. So we're seeing the Nexus player pull ahead there. I'm guessing that's based on the fact that it has an Atom processor in it, so a bit more horsepower in general. Uh, moving on to Antutu, uh, the overall score, um, I'll throw them up here, but you can see here, same kind of uh, differentiation between the three platforms, uh, with the Mini Shield TV being the workhorse, Nexus player, and this score almost twice the performance of the EM95X. So I was kind of surprised by that one myself. And then the final one we ran was uh, Geekbench 4. Um, this one, single core, core performance, uh, again, kind of along the same lines as we saw before. Um, one thing that I've noticed across all of these benchmarks is the fact that the GPU performance uh, is a bit lacking on this compared to both the Shield, obviously the Shield, but also the Nexus player. But being this isn't really a game platform, this is more for media playback, um, I don't think that really matters. Now, even though the Nexus player does score higher on all these synthetic benchmarks, one thing to, to realize is that the Nexus player chokes completely on H.265 encoded videos. Whereas the, this chipset is made to play those back, and from the tests I've ran, it plays those back flawlessly. No issues at all. So again, as a as just a media console, as a media streaming platform, this is still superior to the Nexus, the Nexus player. Um, but that being said, if you're, you know, for $60, with, with, which is what this uh, cost from the Amazon seller I bought it from, I still think it's a great value for just media streaming and playback. Now, if you can afford it, if you can spend a bit more, um, I'd still probably recommend as like the best set-top uh, player is the NVIDIA Shield TV. Um, I have one in my living room, and I'm actually purchasing a second one of the new one that just, was just announced for my kid's toy room. But um, I still think this guy, for the price point, has a great place in, in someone's home if they want to make their TV uh, a bit more robust in regards to what it can do. So um, overall, I'd probably recommend the product. Um, just you know, keep in mind it's, it's made more for streaming and not so much for gaming. So with that, wrap up the review. Thanks for watching.